Hi. I want you to help me in an experiment I'm going to do today. I want you to humor me <laughs> and to take part, if you can, in this little experiment. Let me tell you what it is about. I was listening to the, uh, uh, the uh, International Court of Justice, you know, about the Israel and uh, Palestine conflict. And uh, it has been going on for the last three days, and I have been following it. Today I got there a little bit too late. Uh, then I was able to, to go back and listen to the whole thing. But um, I got there when the uh, Cuban uh, representative was making her statement, and then the Egyptian representative was making hers. And I noticed a difference there. They were both making their case and uh, doing so very well and, and so on. The difference was on the delivery. I found that the Egyptian representative, the person representing Egypt, did a terrific job. Uh, she was actually addressing the points that should be addressed and so on in legal terms. I'm going to start using inter alia <laughs> from now on, among all things. Okay. <laughs> but um, her delivery, I thought, was perfect. And I noticed that while she was doing it. And then I had to go back in order to listen to her argument again. But what, what, uh, what, uh, caught my attention almost immediately is how well she was reading. She must have prepared very well because she was able to not only read but at the same time she was reading she was able to look at the judges and continue reading or even turn the page and she would continue reading. She, she didn't do, oh, uh, you know, while you turn the page. Uh, no. Um, perfect delivery. So she must have practiced like 20 times. She must have read it a number of times in order to come so smooth. And <coughs> in beautiful uh, American English, she spoke. On the other hand, the Cuban representative was not so effective in my judgment, even though she was bringing out extremely important things too. But she had a, a um, relatively, well, not relatively, she had a very thick Spanish accent. And that detracted from the person listening being able to focus. This is what I mean. And don't worry because I am perfectly aware, <laughs> aware of my own accent and I do have Spanish accent and I'm going to deal with that. I'm just saying this so that you don't go off and just say, oh, you're being unkind. You're in, and, and nothing to do with that. I taught besides philosophy and politics, I taught languages for a long time too. And I am well aware that, first of all, when you have a foreign accent is when you learn the language not naturally but artificially. We know that after the age of puberty you're going to have and retain, it doesn't matter for how long you speak it, as in my case I've been speaking English for 55 years and nevertheless there is that non-native aspect to it. So we know that after puberty, you, 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 will, you will carry with you the, not only the pronunciation, which you could perhaps improve, but it's not just the pronunciation, it's the, it's the intonation, is the rhythm, is the pace, it's a lot of other things that detract from y your listener being able to keep focus on what you're saying. Um, 
Let me give you an example. Um, hold on a second, let me drink a little bit of water here. Yes, I was saying that it's, it's not only the actual pronunciation of the word itself, but it is the pace and the musicality of the language. Um, so that you keep the, the pace and the rhythm of your own language and you apply it to this other foreign language and it doesn't quite work in the sense that it look it's like it's like <laughs> music with an erroneous intonation and pace it's like you're not quite hitting the right note you're a little bit you're a little bit out of tune <laughs> if you know what i mean okay so um you cannot listen to a symphony um, if you are, if the musicians are not quite hitting the note, you know what I mean? So that is why when you're making a statement, or as I do many times reading here, um, to the native speaker, that missing the note actually detracts from your being able to focus on what is being said and that is that is quite natural i find myself um, when i'm listening to a video on youtube for example and the person speaking has a very thick accent your ear notice the the, the dissonance a little bit now you're saying that is not important, I'm still, yes, yes, but it might hinder how much you can focus on it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I am well aware of it myself and I'm doubly aware because sometimes I read things to you, right? I'm reading a book about this or that and I find it extremely interesting <laughs> and that's it. I'm going to read this to the people who follow me, to my audience. Not realizing, first of all, <laughs> that just because it is extremely interesting to me, it may not be extremely interesting to you. And even if it were, I, am, I have just read it and I'm in the moment, but you might be cooking dinner or tending to your stables or something like that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know what we did? I think we all, we're all guilty of this. When the pandemic started, uh, we were watching all these videos at home and so on. And we were sending it to all our, sending them to all our friends and thinking that just because we find it interesting that that they would do so my daughter said to tell me please mommy don't send us so many videos we are not watching it and i have the same reaction i received all these videos from people and i don't watch them that is because even though at that moment it was interesting to you it's not interesting at that particular time be it the topic or being the time uh, for you to 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 watch it and so I read things to you sometimes because I find them interesting, not realizing that. Normally when I read, about, I get about a total of 45 views. <laughs> so, so I'm saying obviously it's not interesting to everybody else, obviously. But secondly, I'm interested to know, really and truly, honestly, I'm interested to know how much of my, um, I don't want to say impediment because it is not, but, but let's call it that, my, my uh, deficiency in hitting that right note detracts from your ability to, con to, 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 to focus you know what I'm saying? That is what I want to know. And so watching the Egyptian representative, 
I said, okay, lesson number one. Whenever I read something, I said to myself, because I'm going to continue reading things that interest me, and if you're not interested, fine, and if you are, fine, <laughs> you know, but I'm going to continue. But how can I improve my delivery knowing that I have a certain impediment there? Okay, by impediment, I mean, look, it's reality, right? So if you are a basketball player, if you are five foot five, you have an impediment compared to the guy who's six foot seven. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be good at everything else. It just means that for that particular task, you have a deficiency there. So that is in, in, in this sense I'm talking, okay? So being aware of my impediment, decision, deficiency, whatever nice word we want to use, <laughs> other words I can't think of any, um, how much does it detract from you being to understand or focus and concentrate on what I am reading to you? I want to know that. So I said, okay, first of all, lesson number one to me. Um, I have to not just sit down and read, but watching the Egyptian lady, what I have to do is to have read it myself so many times that I know what is coming. Yeah, so I've been practicing a little something that I'm going to read to you, and I'll tell you about it in a second. But I have been practicing, ha I've read it, it's about two pages of a tiny little book, which is less than an A4 page. Okay, so it's not very long, but I've been practicing and practicing and practicing so that I can do the same, so that I can read it and look at you and read it and turn the page and, and it flows without losing concentration. And then if you care to humor me, I want you to, in the comments, I want you to give me a mark. And this is just for me, so, okay? So I, 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 just, I just want to improve on my delivery, that's all. I cannot change my accent, I cannot change anything, but the delivery I, I can improve. So don't give me a zero, okay, from zero to 10. Zero the worst, 10 the best. Don't give me a zero, okay, because <laughs> that's me. Okay, don't give me a 10 or even a nine because, you know, Laurence Olivier <laughs> would get a 10, okay? <clears throat> Taking into account this hindrance that I have, um, I think an eight would be the very, very, very best I could do. I couldn't possibly get to a nine. The eight would be the maximum that I myself can possibly get to. So a seven, I would be quite proud of myself with a seven or a seven. Okay, don't give me a five either, because that's like saying, oh, you know, you did okay, uh, you're doing, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure, perhaps I'll think about it, you know, in the fullness of time. No, no, come on. If you want to give a five, decide. You either give me a four or you give me a six. Okay, but decide, don't, don't, bleh. Okay, so I want you to be very honest, but, this is important. Don't give me your mark on my English. That's not the point of the experiment. What I, uh, or how well I, or whatever, no. Concentrate on what I am reading. It's a little letter by Seneca, first century. Okay, so already there is another impediment there because the language is literary language, which is obviously different than, you know, conversational language. Um, when you're reading it, you follow it perfectly well, but when you're hearing it, it detracts a little bit. So the point of the experiment is to see 
not to concentrate on my how my words focus on the content of what I'm reading what Seneca is saying and see if you can keep focus if you can follow the argument I'm not asking you to reflect or deliberate on what he's saying you cannot do that while you're listening but but whether you are following the argument despite the impediment yeah um, how much did that affect you were you able to focus on it that's what I want to to find out okay so I'm going to do this and oh dear <laughs> Just to give you a, um, an explanation, it's called, this is a letter that he writes to, to his disciple. I have to hold on the microphone, otherwise the volume is not as good. Okay, so uh, he's writing to his disciple, to his people, and uh, he's talking, the title is On the Philosopher's Meaning, meaning being the the medium way, the middle way, to avoid extremes on one, you know, the philosopher's meaning and so on. Okay, so just concentrate on the content and then tell me whether y it was, you wanted to concentrate on it, but somehow your, was, something was grating in your ear a little bit that you were unable to focus as well as you could. Okay, <clears throat> so, on the philosopher's me, I commend you and rejoice in the fact that you are persistent in your studies and that, putting all else aside, you make it each day your endeavor to become a better man. I do not merely exhort you to keep at it. I actually beg you to do so. I warn you, however, not to act after the fashion of those who desire to be conspicuous rather than to improve by doing things which will rouse comment as regards your dress or general way of living. Repellent attire, unkept hair, slovenly beard, open scorn of silver dishes, a couch on the bare earth, and any other perverted forms of self-display are to be avoided. The mere name of philosophy, however quietly pursued, is an object of sufficient scorn already. And what would happen if we should begin to separate ourselves from the customs of our fellow men? Inwardly, inwardly, we ought to be different in all respects, but our exterior should conform to society. Do not wear too fine nor yet too uncared for a toga. One needs no silver plate encrusted and embossed in solid gold, but we should not believe that the lack of silver and gold to be a proof of the simple life. Let us try to maintain a higher standard of life than that of the multitude, but not a contrary standard. Otherwise, we shall frighten away and repel the very persons whom we are trying to improve. We also bring about that they are unwilling to imitate us in anything because they are afraid lest they might be compelled to imitate us in everything. The first thing which philosophy undertakes to give is fellow feeling with all men, in other words, sympathy and sociability. We part company with our promise if we are unlike other men. We must see to it that the means by which we wish to draw admiration 
be not absurd or odious. Our motto, as you know, is live according to nature. But it is quite contrary to nature to torture the body, to hate unlabored elegance, to be dirty on purpose, to eat food that it is not only plain but disgusting and forbidding. Just as it is a sign of luxury to seek out to seek out dainties, so it is madness to avoid that which is customary and can be purchased at not great, no great price. Philosophy calls for plain living, but not for penance, and we may perfectly well be plain and neat at the same time. This is the mean of which I approve. Our life should observe a happy medium between the ways of a sage and the ways of the world at large. All men should admire it, but they should understand it also. Well then, shall we act like other men? Shall there be no distinction between ourselves and the world? Yes, a very great one, a very great distinction. Let men find that we are unlike the common herd, if they look closely. If they visit us at home, they should admire us, rather than our household appliances. He is a great man who uses pottery dishes as if they were silver, but he is equally great who uses silver as if it were pottery. It is the sign of an unstable mind not to be able to endure riches or poverty. But I wish to share with you today's prophet also. I find in the writings of our Hecato that the limiting of desires helps also to cure our fears. The limiting of desires helps also to cure fears. He said, cease to hope and you will cease to fear. But how, you will reply, can things so different go side by side? In this way, my dear Lucilus, though they do seem at variance, yet they are really united. Just as the same chain fastens the prisoner and the soldier who guards him, so hope and fear, dissimilar as they are, keep step together. Fear follows hope. I am not surprised that they proceed in this way. Each alike belongs to a mind that is in suspense, a mind that is fretted by looking forward to the future. But the chief cause of both these ills is that we do not adapt ourselves to the present, but send our thoughts a long way ahead. And so foresight, the noblest blessing of the human race, becomes perverted. Beasts av avoid the dangers which they see, and when they have escaped them are free from care. But we men torment ourselves over that which is to come, as well as over that which is past. Many of our blessings bring harm to us, for memory recalls the tortures of fear, while foresight anticipates them. The present alone can make no man wretched. Farewell. Okay, I, I, I lost it there a little bit. I had practiced how to turn the page and look at you, but it didn't quite happen. I kind of got nervous or something. Anyway, so that's my experiment. I want to see whether your focus was broken because of the deficiency of uh, not hitting that perfect note as a native speaker would do.
Okay, so uh, if you uh, are <laughs> be, be kind and give me a mark there. Okay, thank you so much. Bye bye.